Chapter 2. What is ecstasy? Quote from Joan Didion. Ecstasy is not the right word at all, says the brother-in-law who has been thinking about it. It makes you think of some mundane ecstasy. Dionysus has been called the most important of the Greek gods. Certainly, he is the most misunderstood. The very profusion of his names and qualities makes the immediate comprehension difficult. He is called the god of wine, the god of abandon, the great liberator, the god of ecstasy. He represents the continual rebirth of life in the spring, the irrational wisdom of the senses, and the soul's transcendence. He is not a straightforward, thundering sky god like Zeus, or a messenger between the worlds like Hermes. Unlike the static, abstract Olympians, Dionysus embodies the continual, unpredictable changes and transmutations of nature. Like the vine, he is born of fire, torn apart, seemingly dead, and always reborn. At once a tragic and heroic figure, like the wine he represents, he brings humans both madness and ecstasy. Western civilization praises the orderly life. We have a healthy skepticism that insists seeing is believing. Our world is built on thinking, logic, progress, and success, and within these limits we feel secure. But today, even our scientists tell us that these limits are illusory. Quantum physics shows the, us the dancing universe, the ceaseless flow of energy going through the infinite variety of patterns. This is the Dionysian energy, the dance of the Maenads, the power of life that flows through all of us and unites us with heaven and earth. You may not have yet identified it as such, but you have probably consciously touched Dionysian energy in your life. When you look into a loved one's eyes and feel for a moment love that is beyond time and space, when you spontaneously shout for joy and feel the positive, invigorating energy charging every cell of your body. Unfortunately, we spend so much time trying to understand the world and ourselves intellectually that we have virtually cut off ourselves from the spontaneous, guilt-free experience of our emotional and irrational natures. We have almost forgotten that such a thing can exist. Dionysian ecstasy is found in the sensuous world, the worlds of poets and artists and dreamers, who show us the life of the spirit as seen through the senses. Do not confuse this with the sensual world, the materialistic world of pleasure that is destitute of spirit. The sensual world is the one we see all around us, the pursuit of money for its own sake, the desperate chasing after empty pleasures. The sensuous world is filled with a profusion of nature's fruits. It's the divine realm, the garden of the gods. What a beautiful thing. If one can make the translation from the sensual world, devoid of spirit, to the sensuous world of Dionysus, then one can begin a new era in one's life. Dionysian Language Part of our difficulty in understanding the Dionysian experience has to do with the words we associate with it. Let's try to understand them in a new way. Irrational Dionysus and his world we describe as irrational, which we usually take to be a negative term. We generally think of an irrational person as a strange, offbeat, or insane, and an irrational statement as incorrect. But the original meaning of irrational knowledge is simply knowledge gained through our senses rather than through our rational thought processes. The Dionysian way is to see the world instinctively, on a sensuous, intuitive level, rather than an abstract, logical, once removed way. Dionysian. The very adjective Dionysian has an uncomfortable associations for most people. When you hear something described as Dionysian, do you think to yourself, ah, the ecstatic principle? The transcendent nature of the soul? Probably not. You're more likely to respond indignantly. Dionysian? What are you suggesting? A wild, drunken orgy? People tearing off their clothes, getting drunk and sleeping with everyone else? Do you want me to lose my job and my marriage in one night? Orgy. Poor Dionysus. He really has been given a bad name. Few people know that the word orgy, which evokes such an emotional response, originally meant ritual worship of the god Dionysus. It was a sacred, not profane, expression of the love of the god. Ecstasy and Joy In the West, the word ecstasy is likely to evoke thoughts of X-rated movies, but this very misunderstood term comes from the root ecstasis, to stand outside oneself. If I say, I am ecstatic, I am simply beside myself. I mean that I'm filled with an emotion too powerful for my body to contain, or my rational mind to understand. I'm transported to another realm in which I'm able to experience ecstasy. 
When the followers of Dionysus drank the god's wine, they stepped for a moment outside their daily lives and experienced the spiritual ecstasy. I'm sorry to say that we rarely stand outside ourselves these days. The world is too much with us. We are constantly working, thinking, planning, doing. What to eat, where to go, how to support our families, who to vote for. All the responsibility and power we burden ourselves with. We can't bear it for long without breaking down in some way. We need some relief from all that strength to be for a moment in that timeless, spaceless, primal place which has no responsibility, which isn't going anywhere. We need to stand outside ourselves and experience the flow of life, the Dionysian energy. Joy is another Dionysian attribute that we have managed to water down. We hear the words in Christmas carols, joy to the world. We read it in books, the joy of cooking, the joy of sex. But what does it really mean? A friend once paid me a high compliment. Robert, he said, you're one of the few people I know who ever uses the word joy. Nonplussed, I replied, oh, and that was the end of the conversation. But he pricked my curiosity. When I thought about it, I realized that I had no idea what it meant. So off I went to the dictionary, where I found one of those fine differentiations in pairs of words that are so valuable to me. To my surprise, I found that happiness was defined as a happening of chance, luck, fortune. The word joy, on the other hand, was defined as an exaltation of the spirit, gladness, delight, the beatitude of heaven or paradise. That's quite a difference. Happiness is always short-lived. We are constantly chasing after this experience. We think that we should be happy, after all. Isn't the pursuit of happiness guaranteed to us in the Bill of Rights? But happiness comes at the whim of fortune. No happiness can be kept permanently. So ask yourself this question. Do you want happiness, which is luck or fortune? Or do you want joy, which is the beatitude of paradise? The two are so close, and the differentiation is so crucial, because to seek joy is to seek Dionysus.